Hello everyone, Rune Wraith here, and today I'm gonna to be showing off 10 skills you need to learn to improve your PVM game on old school RuneScape. Let me preface this video by saying there are a ton of unique and niche skill sets and techniques you can learn to improve your efficiency on certain bosses in old school RuneScape. My goal in this video is to share some of the big technical skills you can learn, practice, and master which are applicable to at least two or more boss encounters. My goal is to share skills which can help you be a more well-rounded PVMer rather than a boss or raid specific skills which are only applicable to one specific encounter. My second note is that I'm gonna be covering a lot of skills at a very high level, which take time to master. This video is intended to identify important PBM skills you may not be aware of, not to teach every one of the skills in excruciating detail. Okay, with that out of the way, let's get to skill number one, prayer flicking. Prayer flicking is one of the biggest and arguably most important skills you can learn in the game. Prayer flicking is the concept of turning off your prayer on the cycles that a monster is not attacking you and turning them back on when the monster is about to attack. This can drastically reduce your prayer drain during combat encounters, which is a great, great way to save on supplies if you don't mind sacrificing some AFKness. It, is that a word? Anyway, prayer flicking can also be useful when you're running out of prayer points, but want or need to finish off an encounter i.e. maybe your whole team is dead at Maiden in the Theater of Blood and they are counting on you to keep your Protect Mage up and not die to save everyone 100k, or maybe a superior Slayer monster spawned on one of the last kills of your task and you're out of supplies, or maybe you're just going for that no Egneal potion combat task at the Corrupted Gauntlet. Prayer flicking can be used just about anywhere combat and prayer is involved. You don't have to simply flick your protection prayers either. You can also flick offensive prayers like Piety, Rigor, and Augury when you are attacking a monster or a boss. Don't forget, if you'd like to flick multiple prayers with one click, you can select your quick prayers from your prayer orb and use the orb to flick as well. Finally, prayer flicking can also be utilized to flick between two different protection prayers in order to negate all damage from multiple NPCs attacking you at the same time. This is one of the core concepts behind the Inferno. RuneScape's toughest PVM challenge. Our next skill is one tick flicking. One tick flicking is like an upgraded form of prayer flicking because if you do it right, your prayer points won't ever drain. In order to one tick flick, you need to turn your prayers on and off in the same tick every tick. Yeah, you heard me right. You're gonna double click your prayers every tick. It's a lot of clicking. So to do this, I would highly recommend using the metronome plugin from RuneLight as it helps to really learn the rhythm of a tick. Alternatively, you can play Sea Shanty 2 since the song is at 100 beats per, minute, beats per minute, which is the same rhythm as a game tick. Start by setting up your quick prayers and turning on your prayers by clicking once. Now every game tick, double click your prayer orb to one tick flick. If done correctly, you shouldn't take any damage and your prayer should not drain. It's a pretty neat trick for when you're in a tight spot. Next, we have movement. Movement is a core mechanic of RuneScape. You may already be thinking, I learned how to move on Tutorial Island. What else do I need to know? Well, firstly, your character moves at one tile per game tick while walking and two tiles per game tick while running. This means that while running, you're skipping tiles. And this is huge for rooms like Zabak, Zarpus, or the Phantom Muspa, where your floor is covered in dangerous tiles. You can cleverly use the running movement mechanic to skip over dangerous tiles, but that's not all movement is good for. You can also utilize clever movement to avoid dynamic elements which are actively pursuing you, like tor the tornadoes in the Corrupted Gauntlet, or moving lightning in the Ulm fight. Tornadoes move at one tile per game tick, the same as your character walking. You can time it so that when your character runs, it skips the tile that the tornado is actively moving towards. And it's important to keep in mind that you can't walk through all tornado patterns while avoiding damage. If two tornadoes are on adjacent tiles to one another and moving at the same speed, and you try to walk through it, the second tornado will always hit. This is because you only skip one tile while running per game tick, so the second tornado will still be on the tile that you are actively moving to for at least one tick. Uh, doing content like the Corrupted Gauntlet and Hallowed Sepulchre can really help to perfect your movement and click pre precision in RuneScape. 
Since we're on the topic of movement, our next PVM skill is Wooks walking. Wooks walking is the process of using the concept of dragging to reposition your character. When you're on the outside of your max attack range and click on an NPC or interactable object in the game, your character will be dragged towards the NPC or item you interacted with using the shortest path. We can alternate our clicks between a tile outside of our max range and the NPC we are attacking to continually get dragged, attack, and move again in sequence. Forecast Acid Phase is probably the most notable use of Wooks Walking. So why do this? Well, because there are boss mechanics that always hit where your player was on the previous game tick. So as long as you keep moving, you take no damage. Wooks Walking allows one to both avoid damage from these types of attacks and continue to do DPS on the boss. However, Vorkath isn't the only place that Wooks Walking can be effectively leveraged for additional DPS. Players can also Wooks Walk the Tornadoes in the Corrupted Gauntlet to continue attacking the Hunliff if they're brave enough, because one mistake there and those Tornadoes will KO you instantly. The next skill we're gonna be talking about is called the Walk Under, or at least that's what I call it. The Walk Under is really simple to perform and is an effective way to help even out the damage you take from bosses and the damage that you deal. There's a plugin called Menu Entry Swapper, and in the Ground Item Swap section, you can check the box called Shift Click Walk Here. This allows you to hold down the Shift key and click to walk underneath large bosses, which take up more than one tile, without accidentally clicking on the boss itself. This is widely used at General Grardor and Krill Sutsaroth because they have a six tick attack speed. If you're using a four tick weapon like an Abyssal Whip, you can attack twice, tank one hit, then walk under and wait for your weapon to cool down rather than just continually face tanking hit after hit from the boss. This effectively means that you can trade two hits of your own weapon for one hit from the boss, thus reducing damage taken. If you're using a five tick weapon like Osmumpton's Fang or the Scythe of Vitor, you should walk under Krill or Bandos after every attack instead of every two attacks to achieve a similar effect of that one to one uh, attack to hit ratio. The walk under method, method isn't just used at God Wars though, it's also used at the Calphite Queen to eat without being attacked, and during phase three Versic as the tanking player to ensure that the whole team doesn't get meleeed for 50 plus damage. Our next skill to master is Red Xing. Red Xing is a pathing and NPC mechanic that takes advantage of some strange programming logic within RuneScape's game engine. You see, when you click to move normally, it'll produce a yellow X, indicating a movement command. However, when you click on a ground item, interactable object, or NPC, it'll produce a red X. You may think that this is simply a visual indication that you clicked on an item. However, under the hood, the game engine processes these types of clicks differently when it comes to NPC pathing. When walking under NPCs, they will immediately try and test each direction and path out into attack range from you, or use their ground slam attack if they have one. This is a problem for methods where NPC pathing is strict and must remain consistent between kills, i.e. in the Baba in the Tombs of a Masket, General Grardor, or Krill Tutsaroth. For some reason, when you perform a red X clip while moving under an NPC, it prevents that NPC from moving while you're beneath them, and thus keeps pathing consistent. For fights like High Invocation Baba, it allows the player to avoid all damage from the boss, and in the 9-0 Zamrak method, Red Xing is essential to avoid taking hits from the boss while running around the room. The next skill on our list is kiting and stacking. I'm grouping these skills together because to me, they're just a smaller subset of the general movement skill in o OSRS. Kiting is just how it sounds, forcing a boss to follow you around as you drag it around the room just out of its reach. Kind of like how a kite follows you through the string you're holding but can't ever reach you because you control the distance between yourself and the kite. This works effectively for bosses which exclusively need to be within melee range to attack you. Think Bando 6-0, the Phantom Muspa's melee phases, and Commander Ziliana to name a few. Kiting is more than just running to each corner of the room, and the Akka fight within the Tombs of a Masket is proof that kiting strategies continue to evolve and take advantage of the monster's unique mechanics and room. Stacking is a simple skill, which can be used on groups of NPCs to stack them on top of one another to make it easier for area of effect attacks to target all monsters in the vicinity. You can stack NPCs by aggroing them onto you and moving quickly between two corner tiles. This works because of the way NPCs path towards your character. 
As you move between two tiles, NPCs will try to track your location and gradually converge on top of one another, making it easy for spells like Ice Barrage or Chinchampas to effectively target all NPCs in the area for maximum damage. This strategy is often used in Slayer when bursting or barraging Dust Devils, Necrails, and Abys Abyssal Demons, and it also works for players looking to train range or magic quickly in the Monkey Madness 2 tunnels. It's no surprise that our next skill involves eating. Eating is a core part of RuneScape's gameplay, and thus knowing both how and when to eat is an essential strategy in high-level PVM. Players who do a lot of PVM probably know each boss's max hit by heart. The reason for this is because they need to know how long they can postpone eating before they can become chanced by a boss's maxed hit. Waiting to eat until you're at low health is a really effective way to keep up your DPS against the NPC. Remember that eating hard foods like sharks, manta rays, lobster, or pretty much any food that isn't a potion will delay your next attack, thus giving the NPC you are fighting more hits on you. This means more damage taken, more food consumed, more hits, and the vicious cycle continues. Sometimes you can utilize the walk under method to eat without allowing the boss to attack you, like in the case of the cow fight queen. However, newer monsters oftentimes have a trample attack like the corporal beast, corrupted hunlif, dusk, and baba to prevent players from doing this. So, Runewraith, what are you saying? Never eat? No. In fact, there are some nifty strategies that you can use to reduce DPS loss while eating. Combo eats are a strategy that a lot of players use to eat two or even three pieces of healing food to rapidly restore health. If you're going to stop attacking and eat, you might as well eat to full again, is the general idea. You can combo eat a hard food like a shark, manta ray, or lobster with either a Karambwan or a Guthix rest potion. And by eating the hard food like a shark and the Karambwan in the same tick, you can restore 38 hit points instantly. You can even take this a step further by also taking a swig of a Sardomen brew to heal 54 health at 99 hit points. The final eating technique I wanna share with you is called tick eating. Tick eating means that there's a slight delay between the damage that is going to be dealt to you and the moment that that hit actually registers on your character. This would mean that if you're on five HP, you can never actually be hit for more than a five. When timing your eat right, you can absorb the hit and replenish your health in the same tick without dying. It's really only useful when there are unavoidable damage and you know exactly when the damage is going to register on the character. The most common example of a tick eat is Sodaseg's big red ball attack in the Theater of Blood, which will instantly kill you if the, that damage isn't shared between other players in your party. In, the, in most cases, experienced uh, Theater of Blood players will generally just tick eat this big red ball so that the, all, they take all of the damage without the entire team suffering. Gear switching is our next skill, and it's a simple one to understand, but a difficult one to master. Gear switches happen in nearly all boss encounters in old school RuneScape. Sometimes a boss has an invulnerability to a specific combat style, like the TOA Wardens, or will transition to a phase with extremely high defenses against certain combat styles, like the Calfi Queen. It's essential to be able to switch gear quickly and accurately to ensure you are prepared for that boss's next attack. Oftentimes, players will, will organize their gear next to one another in their inventory to help make switching easier and faster due to small mouse movements. There's a Runelite plugin which gets a lot of hate called Inventory Tags, and this plugin may help newer players master their gear switches by highlighting specific items in their inventory with a color. For example, I highlight all of my range gear green, my melee gear red, and my mage gear blue, so that I can quickly tell at a glance that I've made uh, my switch accurately. I think the best example of perfect gear switching is done during PvP. Uh, playing last man standing games is an awesome way to practice and perfect gear and prayer switches with little to no risk. Speaking of gear and prayer switches, my last PVM pro tip involves using F keys. I've talked about using F keys in my gauntlet guide video, but would also like to mention them here as well since they're so important in pretty much every PVM encounter. If you aren't using them by now, then the gauntlet is the perfect place to learn about F keys. Click the settings icon and then select the all settings button. From there, select the controls tab and scroll down to the bottom. You'll have the option to assign your inventory and prayer to specific F keys on your keyboard. I find that the F keys to be a bit of a stretch for my fingers, so I use the Runelite key remapping plugin to remap the F2 and F3 inventory and prayer F keys to the Q and E keys on my keyboard. My hand rests naturally on the ASDW keys and the Q and E are only a short tap away to switch between my inventory and prayer. 
So this is my real life setup for old school RuneScape. And I wanted to show some buttons that I use on the side of my Logitech G305 gaming mouse to help me during general bossing. Using the software that came with my mouse, I bound the button in the back to shift so that I can quickly eat food and potions directly from my inventory with the bank window open and use the shift click walk under method that we previously discussed to walk under NPCs. I bind the button in the front to the F4 key on my keyboard and use the RuneScape settings to map that F4 to my spellbook. This is great for when I want to quickly switch to my spellbook and cast Ice Barrage or any spell really. I've used this for freezing crabs in the Maiden Room at the Theater of Blood, quickly casting Crumble Undead on Vorkath spawns, and freezing the Phantom Moose spell while it's in its melee phase. And of course, these are all valid uh, keybinds that will not get you banned because we're still rebinding the keys in a one-to-one -one ratio, i.e. one click of my mouse equals uh, is the same as clicking F4 on my key keyboard. It's not like I am clicking one key and it's doing an auto hotkey, which switches all of my gear or switches all of my prayers for me instantly. Well, those are the top 10 skills I think all PVMers should learn in old school RuneScape if they wanna improve at the game. I hope you all learned something new or interesting from this video and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe as it really helps my channel grow. Thank you and have a great day.